Welcome, my allies from all around, to a live stream. We are doing one uh, inside of Visual Studio. And uh, apparently I'm hearing myself right now because I haven't muted myself on uh, the uh, Twitch. Like, I have Twitch open, so I'm able to just make sure that that's working. And this, the audio in, is in fact coming through. I'm going to do the same with YouTube. Hopefully then we'll be able to get into some nice stuff here as people start showing up. Oh yeah, I also haven't actually um told anyone because I forgot. <laughs> I have like all the stuff open to be able to go ahead and send out, oh yes, I'm live right now, but uh, I haven't gone ahead and done that quite yet. So let's hope that everything's all currently working right now. All right, okay, so this one seems to be going right now on YouTube, so that's good. And now I'm just going to send out the messages. So on Twitter, on Discord, and on Instagram, because that's on my phone and I'm not able, or at least I don't think I can post, like, on my, um, I don't think I can post on my computer if it's Instagram, but I don't know. So I'm just going to post it here because it's all already ready. Finishing up, and uh, there we go. All right. So now everyone should be informed that I am, in fact, alive. And uh, we'll see if anyone likes this or if this is going to be kind of uh, not that great of a experience for all. But uh, I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping you guys enjoy this. It's just that it's something that I haven't really done before. It's always scary to do something you've never done before. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what are we trying to do? We are trying to go ahead and build ourselves a nice little console app. So uh, here we have our basic starter. Uh, it's just like a C++ file. So if you don't know the syntax, uh, basically including streams so that we're able to go ahead and input and output information uh, via the user. We're using a namespace just so that we don't have to write extra code as we like do stuff go later on. And this is the method that is always called whenever you program. So uh, the first thing that's called is this main method here. Uh, it does nothing because all it does is just go ahead and retur return zero by the end of it. But uh, we're going to add a little bit more code to it to be able to actually have stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is try and set up something so that we actually can go ahead and uh, have it be able to, like, um, I'm trying to describe it. So we're trying to make it be able to ask the user what game it wants to play and if it wants to like continue or do all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so here we go. Um, let's try and figure this out here at the start. Doesn't seem like we have too many people joining in quite yet, but hopefully people will start coming in as we go. Let me have a drink of water here. I, I like just got back from work, so I'm trying to be able to actually be all right here. So the first thing I want to do is create like a do while loop type of a thing. So I want it to have like, um, it'll like search for an integer, or at least that's what like I'm ho planning for right now. Uh, so what we're going to have is just like a little key of like, okay, so we have like zero is going to be a uh, quit the program. And then one, is going to be, um, what games are we doing? All right, rock, paper, scissors. And then number two is going to be tic-tac-toe. Three, I think hangman is a good one, but obviously like we can go ahead and change that. Th those are just the th choices we're going to have for now. Uh, we'll see what they actually end up becoming. But uh, yeah, so let's just have like different kinds of uh, methods here that we're just going to have some like helper methods that we'll define later on. Uh, the first one's going to be 
print menu, which is just going to give us uh, the actual menu that shows these different options. So, so we're going to actually implement that method down here, not like that. Um, so using the namespace, we can just use C out, which means console out, if you don't know. Because uh, if we just do that, it'll end up like being able to print that. So let's just like do that. So um, just as like a demonstration here, just to show you guys the stuff if you don't actually know how this all works. Let's save it. And let's go ahead and just delete that message here. There we go. All right. I normally like to keep my messages whenever I'm like trying to stream for that kind of stuff. So that just like popped up on my Discord chat. Um, all right, if we do control F5, I think the Windows debugger does the same thing, but I don't know if it actually does the same thing. I'm just gonna do it anyway, let's see what happens. I feel like it's gonna pop up on this screen here. Yeah, so I'll bring that to over here. So it just like prints out stuff at the top here. And like, that's just like the menu thing that it tries to do. Cause that's the only like uh, piece of code that's actually doing anything, it does stuff. It prints an extra line. And then it shows like the uh, debugging stuff of like, oh yeah, exit it with like code zero and all that kind of stuff, like just close the window. I think control F5, yeah, that's a little bit, it, it shows a little bit less with the debugging. So may, maybe there's something that I'm missing with the debug you can do maybe a little bit more, but uh, for now we're just going to ignore that. So C out, we're just going to say, okay, um, we're just going to like give the information that we have up here, but like actually showing it to the user. So we're going to say then one rock. I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to type it again. I, I normally struggle on scissors. Like I can spell it correctly, but it's just like my like hands just like freeze up whenever I get onto like those kinds of words that are a little bit harder to do. And then we got to two tic-tac-toe. And there we go. So we have like uh, basic options that we have uh, able to be selected. Um, I'm almost wondering if the menu, yeah, let's do that. So let's have it so that the menu is like its own thing. Or not that, <laughs> that'd be a bad idea. So I'll end up having it so that there's like an end line uh, beforehand uh, on the uh, screen and an end line afterward. So it like uh, shows up in its own separate block uh, throughout the uh, whole thing. And that'll just make it like a little bit more neat. Um, we're not gonna add Hangman yet. I think that's something that we can add later on if we really want to. But uh, for now, we're just going to create our do while loop. So do while choice does not equal zero, meaning that well choice equals anything else, um, it's going to be fine. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what happens if we input like a character for like the integer, what happens then, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if it really matters. We could always convert it to an int and maybe it would like always be able to do that. But um, yeah, let's see. So what do, what do we wanna do here? So the main thing I want to be able to do so that we can actually have things be awesome is first of all, actually type something <laughs> instead of messing with the keys. So you want to have it so that it prints the menu first of all. using uninitialized memory. Yeah, we'll fix that later. So first of all, it'll print the menu, the first thing that it does in the program. And then it will be all like, yo, what game do you wanna play? <laughs> I think I'm actually gonna keep that as like what it says. So yo, what game do you wanna play? And then the user's all like, yo, I want to be able to uh, play this game. Basically meaning like CN is like whatever the, uh, user is able to put into 
the uh, choice. So it's able to do that. If we save, it still says un uninitialized. Okay, never mind. It was able to fix itself. So it's no longer uninitialized. It is initialized to a value. And then we can have a switch statement, which basically like says, okay, whatever choices, uh, we're going to do a certain option for it. So like, uh, say for example, like case zero, it's just going to break and do nothing. Case one, it's going to uh, do like rock, paper, scissors or whatever, like rock, you know. Um, but we're just gonna add break for now just so that we can uh, not worry about it. Uh, break, because this one's gonna be like the tic tacs and uh, we're not going to add a available option for the other one yet. And then uh, default means it's like anything other than those options. Um, it's going to say, please enter, or how about let's just say invalid input, or no, yo, that's the invalid input dog. <laughs> nice, okay. So that's, that's what it's going to say. Yo, that's the invalid input dog. And it's going to go ahead and check is choice not equal to zero? You know, it's not because it didn't like go ahead and go do this thing. It's going to go back to the top and say print menu. Yo, know, what game do you want to play? You know, it's just going to like keep doing that over and over again until you like go into one of these two options. Obviously right now it's not going to do anything anyway, but uh, it'll basically keep going until you like say a zero at this point. So let's just like run it. So here you go, like uh, zero is quit program, one is rock, paper, scissors, two tic-tac-toe. Yo, what game do you want to play? I want to play rock, paper, scissors. And it's like, okay, you played that game. Um, now it's going to try and loop again because you didn't choose quit program. Yo, what game do you want to play? Oh, we're going to do tic-tac-toe. And then it's like, okay. And then we uh, do this. Uh, say we want to do like four. Uh, yo, that's the invalid input, dog. And then we can go ahead and say zero. And that quits the program. We can just press any key and close it. So uh, there we go. We've got ourselves a nice little start. I need some more water. And now we're going to play a little bit with C++ because this is actually something I haven't tested before, but I kind of want to see if it works. So let's just like have a new item. We could have a class. We could just have a class of like games or maybe like a class of user if that would be cool to like just have it so that, oh, you have to like select your user before you do anything. I feel like that'd be a lot right now. So I think we're just going to go ahead and have it so that it doesn't track any stats in any of your games. You're just going to go ahead and uh, go through like the games normally. So let's just create a, a C++ file called uh, games. This is just going to be the games. This is the main, and that's like this is this is the main up here. We're just going to tile this games to be a little bit uh, more consistent in what we're saying, because this is where we're going to have the different kinds of stuff. So include iOS, iOS, I, <laughs> stream. We're just going to do that so that we don't use anything else. Using namespace standard. And then we can have different methods inside of here. Um, hmm. Because I'm not sure if we like, would you create maybe like a namespace here to be able to have all these kinds of different like games inside of it? Maybe we can even have like a namespace called games, you know, like namespace. It, let's just not do that for now and like test out something. So here's just going to be like a, a test method that like uh, like outputs this. So it's going to like do that. 
I'm going to save this. And what happens if we try and call test here? Yep, it's not defined. It like needs to know exactly like where uh, this file games is. I'm not sure if like include like uh, games dot cpp actually like counts is that so if i do games dot cpp i'm not sure if that's like correct syntax it is correct syntax actually so it worked once i include uh this like uh, cpp file c plus plus it allows me to be able to use any of uh, the methods included inside of here so that's good um uh yo what up cloutos we are here programming in c plus plus trying to figure out some things uh we're creating a console game so i'm trying to create like a program that has like different options like rock paper scissors tic-tac-toe thinking of maybe doing a hangman game we'll see uh whether or not uh, we have time or whether or not i feel like doing that we also are up to suggestions if there's any easy games in which i can actually be able to build but um, yeah, we just concluded a successful test of that. I'm wondering if perhaps we should have like different C++ files for different games. I feel like that would make more sense. But at the same time, I'm wondering if like uh, it would become like too big of a project. I think that might be what we do because I feel like the games would get like extremely large as we try and add more capabilities to it. So that was just a test. We're going to just delete this file forever and uh, be able to try and go ahead and add a different one. Or not a class. We need a source file. So source.cpp. We can call this one... Um, what, what, what game were we on? Rock, paper, scissors? Rock paper scissors dot cpp include rock paper scissors dot cpp cool all right and that's pretty good i miss coding always have fun with it yeah it's like uh, i definitely enjoy coding myself i am a computer scientist uh, obviously like you can still get into coding if you really want to you know <laughs> it's it's uh, definitely a pretty fun thing to do like uh I, I like to do anyway uh apparently i had something else on my clipboard i didn't really want there include io stream oop i just realized include <laughs> io stream but yeah i definitely enjoy coding uh, being like uh, it's definitely something that uh, uh allowed me to or yeah, allowed me to like choose my major of becoming a computer science major, and hopefully I'll be able to do some pretty cool stuff with that. I've just been trying to experiment and learn a bit more languages. I only know Java at the moment, or well, I guess I technically know C++ now, but not very well, because <laughs> I uh, definitely am like pr pretty, I, I excel pretty well in Java, and I'm kind of trying to convert my skills over to C++. Hopefully it all works out, but yeah, we'll see. So I used to code with Turbo Pascal 5.5 and then 7. Old school stuff. Yeah, definitely old school stuff. I don't really recognize those languages, actually. Like, I'm not sure the syntax or, like, whether or not they're more similar to assembly than, like, some other high-level ones. But I don't know, really. I, don't, I, just, I just don't know much. I, I, I haven't studied computer science that in-depth. But, um... Yeah, let's go ahead and continue on here. So let's just create like a void thing. Been learning a bit of Java as I make my resource pack. Yeah, it's like I I kind of almost am curious as to if I'd want to go ahead and uh, use my Java knowledge to create those kinds of different stuff. But the thing is, I would have to really like the Java edition of Minecraft. And it's just something really hard for me to get into. And it's probably nothing other than the reason that I can't use a, a like a controller on Java like that's probably the only reason I don't really like the game that much but there's also some other things like how you load up the game and just just minuscule things like that anyway uh, void okay now we gotta make a decision here 
Well, I guess we kind of already did. Well, we might have already did because uh, we have like the first, uh, it's camel case, I think is what this is. And uh, I'm wondering if that's what we should use for the rest of this. That's probably what we should use, paper, scissors. You can Bluetooth an Xbox controller into a Windows 10 computer. You can. You can do that. But you'd have to use an external program to be able to have it mapped to the right inputs on the keyboard because Java does not like automatically do that for you. Like I, I've like plugged in my, cause it used to be the same cord uh, with an Xbox controller as you can a, um, a phone. So I, I like actually do that quite often. I plug it in with my uh, Elite controller. I'm able to play the Windows 10 edition, but it doesn't work on Java because like once I said like you need to have like an external program to be able to have it be like, okay, like up on the uh, left stick is moving forward. Like you have to like be able to make sure everything's working and most of those programs you have to pay for. So it's just not something that I really like setting up and uh, something that becomes kind of difficult. So paper, scissors, we can go ahead and have that method here and uh, be able to set that up. So um, first of all, we need to set up like uh, random, I think. I need to look that up. So C++ random number. It's, it's rand. Code one yourself, <laughs> maybe <laughs> that'd be that'd be a bit of work, but I guess I could if I really wanted to. Uh, where is this in? Okay, so int choice equals. I feel like I have to import that function. Oh, is this actually like already? like um, part of the main like stream. Let's actually like just test this. So count, we'll just output that number and see what happens. Er, oh, right, I need to pause my backup and sync because it's not allowing me to save my files anymore. <laughs> If I save too often, that's what happens. It's like, oh, you're saving too often. I can't let you do this. And, oh, okay. Come on, pause. Is it going to work for me? Save. Yeah. I'm going to have to actually quit the application, I think. Quit backup and sync with Google. And hopefully it'll all work out. All right. <laughs> there we go. Now I can save with no problems. And... There were build errors. <laughs> okay, no, I guess I guess this isn't actually defined then. Do I have to include? I'm betting that's what I have to include, but we'll see. How did I do this before? I swear I I did this in a different project, but I forget now how I did it. <laughs> Let's open that other project. Let's just open a file. So where is it? So it's like programming, console games. Because I technically already did this kind of like a program before, but I'm trying to do it with like more advanced C++ knowledge. I guess I just had one file for the entire thing, which is terrible practice now. Now that I like think now, now that I've actually like done stuff before. So how did I do this? I did do it like this. C stand library, and then time. I'm just going to copy this. And we'll see how this works. Oh wait, maybe I don't need to use like the this like 
No, I do need to use that namespace. Maybe I don't need to include IO stream because it's already being included wherever I'm like using my other stuff. Nope, that doesn't work either. <laughs> Already defined, it's the linker. It says it's already defined in here. Oh, uh, yo, what up, Frankie? We are programming and apparently failing because the linker actually really doesn't like the fact that um, I'm trying to call methods that are defined in a different class. Because <laughs> the linker is saying, oh, this is this is already defined in like main dot object, but um, I'm trying to make it so that it's just calling it here, not there. So I don't know like what it's trying to do. It may be Martian to me, yeah. It's uh, definitely like, it's an interesting language. I'm trying to learn it, but obviously like to someone who's even less experienced with uh, coding, it might really be like hard to figure out. So I'm not not expecting help, <laughs> but it'd be nice to have it. <laughs> okay. Maybe this just needs to be a class. Like maybe this needs to be like rock, paper, scissors class instead. Cause otherwise like this is just like something that I don't know how else to be able to do all of this. So C++, how about let's just look it up online, be like um, uh, methods in different um, files. You can make uh, cookies that will help. <laughs> I, I would like cookies, I wouldn't mind that. I only had like one today and everyone knows that you should have like at least like five uh, in a given day. So, uh, you know, if you could do that, I wouldn't mind. Anyway, what does it say here? You can use header files. I don't want to use header files. <laughs> oh, actually, a header file would make a lot of sense. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm looking for. That's the solution. Um, so let's go ahead and add a header file. And this is what we're just going to call like the header of uh, games. So games.header is going to be like uh, that bit. And uh, we can have it so that we have, um, let's see. So void rock, paper, scissors. You can have like void uh, tic-tac-toe. Um, maybe we can have like a void like TTT is one so that we can check if like uh, the game of tic-tac-toe is done. Um, we'll see how that works. I don't know why this one says it's not defined, but this one said it is defined. Um, we'll have to see how all that works. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> totally knew about header files, Cloutus. Um, but anyway, the main file doesn't need to include rock, paper, scissors. It needs to include games.h. Or at least I think. We are going to just test this just to make sure that it's working. But I'm still not like entirely certain that I'm actually doing this correctly. But it just seems like the type of thing that makes sense. So I'm going to be able to uh, define rock, paper, scissors in this file. It'll call it in this file. And since it's using the header file, the linker is going to put them together. And I think that's all I need to do a test. So let's just like make sure everything's saved. Let's just close that and uh, go ahead, try and run it. Ooh, look, it ran. So we can have like this here. Uh, let's play a game of rock, paper, scissors. 
41. It, it actually did like a, a random value, 41. Uh, 67, 34, 0, which is a random number between uh, 0 and 90, uh, 100, not including 100, though. 69, 24, 78, 58, 62, 64, 5, 45. Okay, I'm having way too much fun here. Let's close. <laughs> so... There we go, that works. We also know that the random function works, but we also need to seed the random function. So uh, how do we do that? Um, so the first thing uh, I want to mention is that if we ran that file again, it's going to pr produce the same random numbers every single time. So we don't want that. We want to be able to have it so that it actually goes ahead and um, like uh, is generated differently. So what we need to do is seed the random number generator by saying srand time null. And there now we'll be able to um, check whatever time it is on the machine that's running, which goes down to, I think the millisecond, either that or just the second, but um, Either way, you'll be able to go ahead and detect, okay, this is like the uh, time it is, and um, it'll make sure that the numbers are generated randomly from that. Um, count rand. I need another drink of water. But we don't actually need that thing anymore. We're actually just going to create a rock, paper, scissors game. We're actually going to create something interesting now. 30 minutes? It's been 30 minutes? <laughs> it can't have been 30 minutes. Either Maybe I was just rambling. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, go here. So um, what do we got to do? So first of all, let's just define what numbers are going to be um, what value. So how about... E. If we do like an enumerator, is there any way? I feel like that's not just not going to be like uh, useful. So let's have it so that we have like um, zero is rock, one is paper, two is scissors. So that's three different options that it can be. Um, We'll be able to tell the user, yo man, what, uh, um, yo man, you gonna choose rock, paper, or scissors. So, what's the best way to make them select? Um, okay, how about how about instead of saying like this obscure thing, um, type type um, R R for rock uh, P P capital P for paper or S for scissors. We go ahead and have an end line so that the person can go ahead and do a C in to a, a character, which we're going to store here. Character choice equals, or just choice. We're going to move our comments here so that it actually is uh, corresponding with the value that we're storing it in. And int choice int, or how about that? Uh, choice int choice car. That way we can like determine which one's which. So C in is going to input the value uh, into choice car, or yeah, that'll that'll be good. So allow like the. Uh, prompt the user for their selection. From the choice, 
it'll be like one of three options. So um, how about, okay, so first of all, we're just going to actually have it so that there's an int computer choice equals rand modulo three. That just means that it's like it can choose a value of zero, one, or two because it's like the three different options that it can try and do. It's going to be that, that, and that. Okay, so let's just make a switch statement. Let's just make these this easy. So switch. Do we need to convert it to an int? I don't think we need to convert it to an int. We're just going to make a choice car. So choice car. If they choose uh, R, it's going to be the same if they choose this R. If they choose this P, it's going to be the same if they choose this P. Basically what this does is like whenever there's a break, it just means that it like uh, stops being able to execute anything below it. So once it does case R here, it's going to like uh, immediately go until it like reaches a break, meaning like both R and R are going to do the same code that's going I'm going to write here. So that's just what I'm doing, making sure that uh, whether or not they do like capital or lowercase, it's not going to matter. They're still going to do the uh, same thing. I think I lost several brain cells. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the thing of trying to follow the coding. Like, uh, I'm trying to explain it at least like in somewhat simple terms, but I know I'm probably like not, I, I mean, I'm not, I haven't planned this ahead of time, so it's kind of bad to be a teacher in all of this. And uh, it's also like I'm trying to just be able to entertain at the same time, so it's a little bit uh, difficult. To, I, I can understand that. Uh, so, yo man, type your choice. It's going to have different options of choice. If it's a rock, that means that if the... Okay, we have three different options. So if computer chooses rock, if computer chooses paper, and if computer chooses scissors. These are going to be different every single time for each of these. So you have to like kind of customize what happens in each one. So if a computer choice equals um, zero, we're going to have an else if so that it like only checks it if this statement fails for paper. And then we'll have another one for scissors. And all of these are going to be unique to their different respective parts. So we're just going to copy the code uh, across them. Uh, this is honestly the easiest way I can think of doing it. It's like a game that, I mean, you don't normally want to copy code, but it's also like you have to compare values and make sure that they're all like uh, working together unless you create a class oh that's something i kind of want to create a class let's do that i think that that's actually going to be a little bit easier to do than repeating this code over and over again so we're going to have like a compare to method that basically says uh, which one is like would win in a battle. But we'll have to kind of, uh, I feel like the compare method's gonna do like the same type of thing though, you know? Um, hmm. We're just gonna do it like this since I know how to do it like this. I'd have to like write it down on like a piece of paper and like stop like uh, working it out like quickly if I uh, was trying to work out like that. So we're just going to do this. So anyway, 
if it chooses rock while the user chooses rock, it's going to be, so first of all, let's just like say what, mm, I feel like this would be easier with classes. I keep changing my mind, I really do. <laughs> Let's do it with classes. So basically a class is a nice little way for you to be able to, excuse me, rock, paper, scissors, to be able to go ahead and have it so that like uh, you have like an object and you can like compare it to other objects or like store them together and use them with uh, different methods um, involved. So you can like group your code a little bit more together. Uh, in this case, we're going to try and have an object for whatever the user chooses and another object for whatever the computer chooses. So RPS choice. Uh, should it have like a underscore? We're just going to say choice. So you have like this kind of stuff, like it's going to have like a constructor and a destructor to be able to uh, uh, make the object appear in the world and to make it to uh, be no longer in the world anymore using namespace standard. It's basically what just like creates the instance and deletes it from existence. Um, So what we want to do is have some variables that the public cannot see, which is pr why we use private. Um, one of them is going to be like, v uh, like an, an enumerator maybe. So how do enumerators work is the thing. I think this works. So we can have like a different list of like things. So here we go, rock, paper, scissors. So like they'll all correspond to like a value like zero, one, and two is what's going to happen. And we'll name it to uh, choice. So the enumerator choice is rock, paper, or scissors. And uh, we can actually refer to them as rock, paper, or scissors without having to worry about like uh, what happens there. Then we can have just like a uh, int of like uh, git choice I feel like we should have like a, okay, so this is just going to be constant. You don't need to know what that means. I'm just going to write it there. So <laughs> me explaining it will just confuse you more. Um, so we have int get choice. We're probably going to have like a static method, meaning that it's not going to be tied to any specific object. We can just call it whenever. It is going to be static. Um, I think int is the correct, like, uh, thing compared to that's also going to be constant oh right you can't have a uh, constant static I was confused as soon as, as I joined the stream. Yeah, I, I try, but obviously I sometimes fail. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, I feel like we, should, no, we shouldn't have a default constructor. We should really have a, a non-default one. Like uh, we have just an int 
of uh, choice. We can get rid of that just to make it simpler. Oh, right. Different uh, syntax. Does this work? Type name is not allowed. Is there any way we can fix that? I guess the enum enumerator is just going to help us, so we're not going to worry about like uh, actually setting that to a value, since I don't think this actually can be set to a value now that I think about it. So int um, choice list is what we're going to call it. And then this is the actual choice, the choice that the user uses. And that works. Then we can do like a compare. So RPS choice uh, compare two. Or I guess it should be compare since we're having it be static. So we'll have like compare of um, an object of RPS choice and RPS choice. So we'll just have two different objects that are going to be compared together. Oh, I typed it wrong here. That's why. How do I implement a static method? <laughs> oh, int. Still here just in lurk mode while I'm doing paperwork. Okay, cool, Klautos. Uh, we'll see when things really get interesting because uh, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how all of this is uh, working because I have no idea how to implement a static method. <laughs> Let's just try and like look at that book. Okay, so C++ static method. Ah, uh, okay. So we don't actually need the stack here. It's just that like in the header file, we can keep it there to like uh, make it to specify that it is going to be that. So I'm just going to say, just comment that it is static so that we can figure out exactly what we're going to do here. So with the compare method, we can go ahead and say, okay, um, hmm. Is there an easy way to do this? So choice one, let's just have some like examples. So let's say like choice one is rock. Uh, second one is that. How many choices are there? Because. <laughs> Because there's zero 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 one zero two 
one, 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 two. We skipped one, one, zero. Then there's the same thing, but with uh, twos. So there's eight different options. I should have known that, but I wanted to just write them out just so that we have a few examples. So rock against rock, let's just say like, okay, we subtract the first from the second and we get zero. That's how we figure out that there's a tie. If we subtract the first one from the next and it's negative, that means that the first one is smaller, meaning it loses. That doesn't work because um, like uh, a rock against a piece of paper, the paper wins, but it's like this is also a negative value. So it's going to end up being like the, this one loses while this one wins. So we have a way of determining a tie. There's a tie if, they're, if you subtract the values and they're the same. But there's no easy way to check if it's a win or a lose after that point other than having some like if statements and stuff. So let's figure out that. So or let's just have like, uh, let's just grab the choices. So int choice one, who, okay. I'm just gonna say obj1 and obj2. We'll say RPS, RPSC. That way it's like a little bit more specific. RPSC one and RPSC two, so that we can have int choice one and int choice two without having to like type that over and over again and have like a different weird naming convention. So int choice one equals RPSC one dot get choice. Int choice two equals rpsc2 dot get choice I'm going to make this enumerator static because that's really the only time we're going to use it I think is like in a static context So we can like call the choice list by doing this. So we can see, okay, maybe, I wanna check that this actually works though. Maybe, like eventually. I'm not sure if I even need the enumerators just because like, I feel like they just overcomplicate things. I'm just gonna change my mind altogether and just ignore this. create three parameters for the three options that the player can choose. So it runs whatever they choose and the randomizer decides the outcome from within rather than all three at the same time. Well, the randomizer doesn't, it doesn't actually need to like determine like all three options at the same time. Like I'm trying to be able to go ahead and see like, um, like more of just like an option of, oh, if it's, um, I'm more just accounting for every scenario because like the code isn't going to run through every single scenario each time because it determines, de determines before the compare method that um, like the uh, user cho chooses this and then the computer chooses this. It's just the matter of making sure that once you have those two values, you're going to try and uh, compare them to without having to worry about like um, the other options at that moment. Not sure if that really made sense. 
it's just hard to like do a rock paper scissors game without it like you know becoming a little bit more complicated than you'd probably want it to be so let's see here we've got ourselves the restream chat up here so choice one and choice two let's just say like if they equal each other can't stay any longer it's bedtime hope you get your martian language game done all right good night frankie it was nice having you and uh yeah hopefully i'll be able to figure out all of this mess eventually I mean, it's all eight outcomes, not nine nine outcomes, but uh, actually, is it nine outcomes? It is nine outcomes. Never mind. Because <laughs> three squared. Night. All right. Okay, so if choice one equals choice two, return zero, because that means that they're the same. Hmm. Yeah, who knows? I mean, you might be on to something, but like, I just, I don't think it would work the way I'm interpreting it anyway. Um, we'll kind of see how it all goes. So, um, if zero, what happens if we move this down to zero? That doesn't really work. <laughs> Because if we do 1 minus 0, it's going to be 1, 2 minus 0, 2. So we have like, okay, if it's 2, it loses. If it's 1, it wins. But then we have this, where if it's, if it's like 1 for the first one, that's going to be 0 minus 1, which is uh, minus 1. And then 1. What's this? So rock, paper, not scissors. Scissors is supposed to beat that. I think I'm onto something. <laughs> I think I'm actually onto something here. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. This is scissors. This is rock. Bam! I got it! <laughs> okay, so um, you basically subtract the values. I don't got it. <laughs> I thought I had it, but I didn't because I'm trying to do it uh, over like the entire solution. So what I had, the thing I thought I had was that if you like go into the ones that aren't the ties, so let's just like not look at the ones that are the ties. Let's just like delete those for now. Um, if you look at these ones in which they're the different scenarios, like uh, if you do like the second minus the first, it like ends up being that it's like, oh, this is a one, one. Let's try and make this actually like seem a little bit nicer. Uh, this one's gonna be one, this one's gonna be two. This one's gonna be negative one, that one's gonna be one. Uh, this one is I accidentally deleted something here. And um, so you got negative two, and this one is negative one. So out of these, 
the one that is the smaller value, or the larger value in this case, I guess, makes it so that the first value loses. I feel like it should be first minus next so that it's like not, <laughs> it's not so weird because I feel like the smaller value would mean that the first loses and the bigger value would mean that the second one or that this one wins. I'm going to do that for a second here. So let's just like change all of like the minus signs. So that means that this one's a loser, this one's a loser, and this one's a loser. Because uh, this is scissors against paper. Scissors should win against paper. Maybe I didn't have it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't have it because uh, this is like scissors against rock and rock should win. So that means that this one should be like the larger value. In this case, the larger value is negative one, in which rock is against paper and paper should win. Maybe I did have it right the first time. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm struggling, but hopefully we get in the end. So, rock against paper. Rock should lose, and because it's the smaller value, it does lose. And then it's... Uh, Scissors against paper, scissors wins. Scissors against rock, rock uh, it loses. Because the problem with this method is that there are like uh, different options in which like it goes either way. Maybe I can check if one is bigger than the other then. Like if I check, oh, is uh, the second one larger than the first? Then that means that you take like the uh, largest value. I feel like a bunch of if statements would have been easier. I'm almost certain a bunch of if statements would have been easier than this. Because I'm just trying to figure this out. Like I, I kept like going back and forth on whether or not I should figure this out. And I've decided now I shouldn't have figured this out because this is already taking a lot of time. And I'm not sure if I'm getting anyway, anywhere. Create three different processes, yeah. Because that's what I was trying to have earlier with the if, the if statements. Like if choice one equals zero, then you'd be able to like uh, test them in like a certain way. Have it be like um, uh, the first value of one and then the sec next value of two. Yeah. So that's why I have here, but I was like kind of changing it about, I think that like the compare availability would make it like nicer. So yeah, let's try that. Let's try like a, a better kind of thing. I think that this one could still stay because, you know, if the choices equal each other, then they're obviously going to tie. But um, then after we check that, It should be fine. So then we have a switch statement. Uh, 
of case zero, case one, case two. So we can say for case zero, if um, choice choice two equals one, return lose, so negative one, else if it's two, Then we return one. Kind of keep this uh, basic pattern for the next two. We have uh, case two if it's uh, zero, and if it's one, if it's zero, if it's two. I think it's still the same pattern of lose, win, lose, win, lose, win. So actually, we don't need to check if. I think we can just say else because it only is one option at that point. So this is scissors. If scissors goes against rock, they lose. If paper goes against rock, they lose. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> Maybe this was the only one that didn't make sense for. I think both the top and the bottom work because uh, paper or rock wins against uh, scissors. But for this one, uh, paper wins against rock and paper loses against scissors. So let's switch the values for this because I was thinking these are both the same amount of code. Like why why are these both the same like code snippets? Like that does not make sense. So there we go. So let's just say rock loses to paper. Just just be able to actually like comment this so that we can see exactly what's going on. Rock beats uh, scissors. Uh, paper beats rock, but paper loses to, what's the other choice? Uh, scissors. Uh, scissors loses to rock. And then a uh, rock scissors beats paper. Yeah, that makes sense. All of these make sense. The code seems to uh, work fine. And that way we can go ahead and get rid of this switch statement. It'll be all contained within the method inside of like those things. So we can go ahead and include a RPS choice header file. So we can have like two objects of RPS choice here.
and it'll be um oh i have to like be able to actually convert the uh thing into an int so choice int So, okay. I could also always just make it like 0, 1, and 2. I, I might just do that, 0, 1, and 2. <laughs> just so that we don't have to worry about it. It's a little cheaty, but it's also, you know, not not that bad. Be nicer if I could just have like a GUI that had buttons, but you know, it'll it'll be fine to have it just be like this so that we don't have to worry about that kind of thing. There we go. We have two different uh, pointers to objects that we'll be able to go ahead and uh, work here. So now RPS choice compare. Insert opinion on C++ here, yeah. So uh, welcome to the stream, Sir Waffle Gaming. We are trying to create a very, uh, yeah, I am trying to learn the language a little bit here. Um, trying to create ourselves a nice little console game. So uh, I actually do know Java, uh, mostly. I'm, I'm intermediate. I wouldn't say I'm advanced, but I would say I'm intermediate. And um, because I like know the different data structures and like um, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm just trying to like really hone in on the basics and the syntax and hopefully work it out. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're on both Twitch and YouTube if you're seeing like the different comments coming up here. Uh, so Clouto says it'll simplify it for you so you can get it working right first. Then you can go back and tweak it so the player enters R, P, or S. Yeah, it's like, uh, definitely could probably add that functionality later but at the moment I'm not sure how much I need that at the moment so we'll see how it works so it'll choice uh, compare them together oh right it returns an int um, int result equals that and then we can go ahead and have like the uh, system actually be able to output our results so an extra line break. We'll have a thing that says um, player. Ooh, actually we should really make it so that it like does a get choice that's like also a, a string. Or maybe just a two string. Pfft. Maybe get simpler. Const. I'm still not a hundred percent sure on like the whole const thing, but you know I'm. <laughs> I I'll not complain too much since it's something I have to do anyway. Um, string. There we go. Include string. I guess I should probably say standard string, even though I think just saying string probably works. It's, yeah, we'll see if it would have. I'm not going to wait around and see if it would complain at me otherwise. Anyway, I just realized I never actually created the methods of get choice either. So int, uh, I'll just copy this.
and then string to string. Then I can go ahead and actually have it be inside of a, uh, a thing. Declaration is incompatible. It, I'm not sure if it's just like because I haven't actually returned a value or if it actually is like incompatible for some reason. Oh, I have to say const, don't I? There we go. That works. So there we go. Return this pointer to choice. And uh, then we can go ahead and say, um, we'll just have another switch statement. <laughs> Not a switch statement. Of like the rock, paper, and the scissors. So case zero it's going to return rock. Case one, it's going to return, uh, I'll add the break statements later, I just realized I forgot that. Scissors, case two, return. Um, actually, it probably doesn't need the break statements now that I look at it, like because once it returns this, it's not going to go down to the later statements anyway. It's probably best that I have the break. Nah, I'm just gonna have it be. Re no. What do you think, Sir Waffle Gaiman? <laughs> what should I do? Because like uh, the break statements, like I feel like they'd be completely useless in this kind of a switch statement. Um. Oh wait, it's not scissors. It's paper, paper, and then scissors. Because it's just going to like go through like the three different options and uh, do it for me. Or how about you? You chose. Chose is that how you spell chose? I mean, I know it's not the same spelling as choose because the past tense of choose chose cho chose <laughs> it doesn't sound like a real word anymore it's just yeah chose that well, that's true it's like a past tense of choose okay <laughs> let's not worry about it anymore let's just go ahead and go back and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Sir Waffle Gaming stopped watching, so he's not going to answer my question. <laughs> anyway, you chose. Um, then we'll have player dot to string. Or I, I guess that works too. Does that work? Oh, that's why it's not working. I see. Because it needs to do that. And that needs to not go in that direction. <laughs> So you chose that, the computer chose player to string. So it's going to be able to tell uh, whether or not you chose like a uh, rock or you chose paper and stuff without me having to like store that like in a little bit more of a harder way. It'll just like automatically do it for me. And then it will say, Hola, bully bait, what is up? We are trying to figure out um, coding. Well, I'm trying to figure out coding. <laughs> so 
Uh, we're trying to create ourselves a nice little uh, console application that will be able to uh, go through and like have it so that, oh, you have like different options of different games to play. Yo, what game do you want to play? Uh, yo, that's the invalid input dog and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it'll just like keep running uh, whatever kind of stuff. We're trying to do rock, paper, scissors though. It's taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to. And maybe that's half because I'm also trying to do a commentary over the top of it. So there's that whole entire thing. And there's also the matter of uh, dealing with a dog in the background who likes to bark all the time. Yo, Zane. Quiet. He didn't listen. <laughs> all right, so let's try and uh, go ahead and finish this off. So first of all, the result is going to tell me whether or not it was a tie or whether or not it was a um, not. <laughs> Dogs are fine. Try kids. Yeah, that's true. It's like uh, dogs, at least you can just get them to stop barking. But, you know, yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are probably harder in that respect. Um, so let's switch the result. Go ahead and have it. So we have like different cases. So we have case uh, one is my that's a little bit better so that my head is like a little bit better in the screen uh, case zero is going to be a tie actually that doesn't make sense why in the world are we doing a switch so what we're trying to do is be able to have it if it's a positive negative or a neutral value so if a result is greater than zero uh, that means it's a win. L okay, so this one is tie. Else, if result equals zero. Else, if result is less than, eh, I guess we can just say else because there's no other option than it being less than zero. Um, that's a lose. And <laughs> let's just have happy faces, and then we have uh, just, you know. <laughs> okay, there we go. So if it's a win, that means that we should say, first of all, count. You win, or maybe that shouldn't be the first thing we say. I feel like the first thing we should say is like, uh, whatever beats whatever, you know? So if you win, that means that yours should be displayed first. So count um player to string beats the computer's choice wish i could stick around this is a good idea for a spring especially if it's in parallel with homework that would be clever but um it's like, uh, it, it, this is actually just something for fun because uh, I, I'm just trying to learn the language. Like I um, am a computer scientist and it's uh, something that I need to learn at some point. Like I can't just go around like only knowing Java all the time. Like I gotta learn something else. And uh, maybe after this I can learn Python too. That's something I've been wanting to learn for a long time. But I feel like C++ is a nice one that can like really create a, a sturdy application. Or at least relatively sturdy. It has its it has its downsides. <laughs> but uh, yeah, later on, dude, it's been nice to have you even for just that short amount of time. 
teach Python at mind fairs? Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting, actually. Especially since, you know, I would expect it to be more Minecraft related rather than Python. Like, I would expect them to teach Java, you know? That, that would make sense to me. But uh, that, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, anyway, um, you win. Okay, what were we trying to do again? So that beats that, you win. Okay, player beats, okay, player beats computer later on. And then we can say it's a tie, dude. <laughs> have a good time. You as well, whatever you have to do. Um, see what uh, goes on and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll see you at some other time. And then we'll say, this will be the opposite. <laughs> Don't want two bits there. It'll be computer beats player. And then it'll say, cow. You lose. You're a loser, man. You won, bro. I'm just like going to have the most chill program ever. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you know. So it's a tie, dude. You won, bro. You're a loser, man. And all that kind of stuff. Display the user choices, uh, the result compares values, compares values inside of the choice, RPS choice objects. Creates objects based off of what the uh, both players ended up choosing for their um, choices. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that actually. And uh, there we go. We have this nice thing, uh, seed, seed the random operator. So there we go, now it's all commented out. It's a relatively simple game. We do have this here, which isn't as commented out, but I don't think it needs to be as much. And then we have this whole entire thing. None of them are not used. The only thing that's private is the choice variable. Um, yeah, we'll call that good for now. I think we'll even just like delete like those from here. I think the only other thing that we want to do perhaps is be able to like have an option to like play again. So what we'd want to do in that case is be able to just have like int computer choice here. So those are like um, outside of here so that they're like always already allocated inside of memory. I think that works. And then we can go ahead and tab that. Do. while um, continue, I guess. 
I have to create a uh, thing for continue, don't I? I should do that. Okay. So, well, while continue on. So we have the game's header file, but we also probably need like the helpers or like something like that. We need like a helpers file that will like be, allow us to be able to um, see different stuff. I feel like that'd be, I feel like that should be another source file though, which would need another header file. Hmm. Because where should the helpers be? Like, should they be inside of main.cpp? Like, I feel like print menu should be a helper. As well as, like, continue on, you know? Because those methods are ones that will help to be able to format, like, the uh, different outputs as they go. So, yeah, let's do that. Header file, add a new item. Helpers.h. We can include helpers.h here. And we can go ahead and have a print menu right there so that uh, once this runs, it'll be able to know that, yep, there's a method already defined here that will be able to run and call it good. Now we also need another one called boolean um, continue on. And with that method, um, first of all, we need to actually create the CPP file that will be the helpers. I think. Yeah, because we can create a helpers.cpp file that uh, actually implements these. So inside of main I mean, unless we want to just have all of the helper methods at the bottom of main, since they are like a part of that, I guess would make sense. God bounce out, Klautos. All right, Slater on. Been good having you. Even if you're just in the background a little bit, still nice to know someone's listening to my ramblings, you know. So uh, yeah, I'll see you at some other time. I think continue on should just be at the bottom here. So bool continue. Nah, we'll have them in a different file. No, we'll have them here. Having them here makes more sense anyway. There's not going to be that many can like uh, that many helper methods. And if there are, we'll put them inside of helpers.cpp. Later on. All righty, so we have continue on here. All we need to do is go ahead and include the helpers.h file so that we can actually have continue on uh, be able to be ready and run. and continue on, we'll have it so that it uh, sets up a thing where it's like, okay, we have like a car called like, uh, like choice, I guess, because, you know, that makes sense. And then we'll just have a do while loop that allows for a user to input stuff. So count continue. And they'll have like uh, two options, yes, no.
it's going to go into the choice and it's going to have like two different options. So it can be like the capital yes, the lowercase yes, or the capital no, lowercase no. Uh, it just needs to be able to uh, go ahead and do all that kind of stuff. So uh, continue. We'll do that. We will say um, if if choice equals yes or choice equals yes or you get the idea. If it equals any of these options, or if it doesn't equal any of these options, so we're going to do that instead. I, I was wondering if this was going to happen. I was going to like have to rewrite the entire thing, but it's basically like just using like um, the um, what's it called? Oh, what is that called? It's like a rule in which like um, like not statements with ands in between is the same as um, uh, nodding the entire thing when it's like uh, ors and uh, equals. But because uh, like kind of distributed property, it starts with an M. I'm pretty sure it's not McLaurin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. But it's that property. So we're going to try and like do that and say uh, count Yo, that's the invalid input dog. <laughs> we'll just copy. And yeah, we'll just do it while true. It'll just like keep on looping. And it's more like uh, if like choice ever equals like uh, the yes. So it'll just continue. So I'll skip the rest of the code is what I'm trying to do there. So that it doesn't like go ahead and like look at these if statements afterward. So we'll have these, we'll have these, but we'll change them up so they actually do equal the stuff. So if it equals any of them, then it will return true and false respectively. Meaning like, uh, yeah, so like uh, it'll be like continue, yes or no. It's going to return a value of uh, yes, I want to continue or no, I don't, true and false. So here it's like this is just going to happen when like uh, no valid character is input. This asks the user for yes or no. Return true if yes, return, 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 false if no. So there we go. Otherwise, it'll just keep looping. It'll keep on doing it until you actually make yourself a real choice.
That way, with that helper, we can do a continue on thing. So, I think we're ready to at least test the first game, if I'm right. So here we go. Yo, what game do you want to play? We could go to one, rock, paper, scissors. Yo, man, type one, for, zero for rock, one for paper, and two for scissors. Okay. I want to type zero for rock. You chose rock. Computer chose rock. It's a tie, dude. Continue. So I did the continue method. If we do like a random character, it's going to say, yo, that's the invalid input dog. Yo, that's the invalid input dog. If we do yes, it's going to go ahead and do it again. Um, I almost don't like how it formats it because like the type zero for rock and like that kind of thing. I almost feel like that just needs to like have an extra line like it needs like one space because once I say one, what game do you want to play that also needs an extra line so we'll just have it be there so that it can be true everywhere. So here we go. One. You chose paper, computer chose rock, paper beats rock. You won, bro. Awesome. And then I can have a capital Y and it still does the same thing. I do one, it's a tie dude. I say no, and it goes here to this menu. And then I can go ahead and choose rock, paper, scissors again, and go ahead and choose scissors this time. I still won. I've only tied in one so far. And then I can have like a capital N and it still works. It's able to go to this menu. Yo, what game do you want to play? I'm just going to quit. And there we go. Like we actually have a, a relatively working um, rock, paper, scissors game. So the last thing I want to do is go ahead and have that there so that it's a little bit formatted better. But I think that's basically all for rock, paper, scissors. Let's have a little bit of drink. All right, there we go. Very, very, comp well, relatively compact code is, I think it's compact, but it also just like, you know, it could, it could be like a little bit much, but I think it's good. We'll see how it all works. So we have a tick tack toe is one game that we can have for case two, although it is undefined. So if we try and run this, it probably is going to run a um, error. Since if we define it inside of a header file, we don't actually need to define the method. We don't actually need to define the method at all if it's in a header. But if we called it inside of the program, I think the compiler is going to not like that. So we're going to have to like go ahead and actually create our tic-tac-toe method. And I'm going to do that inside of a new C++ file. So C++ file, we'll call it um, tic-tac-toe.cpp. We can include all of this stuff. And then we can actually have the uh, void tic-tac-toe method that's inside of here. And now it doesn't have the green squiggly because it's actually defined. So there we go. We can kind of probably do the same thing-ish. I'm going to just reopen rock, paper, scissors here temporarily just so that I can go ahead and kind of copy like this style of thing here. I don't think I need like random in time. Actually, I might need random in time again because I need to, no. Because I'm not going to make it like against a computer. I'm going to make this one actually like you have to go against uh, another person. I feel like it'd be kind of hard to make an AI that's actually smart about where you need to go in tic-tac-toe. Probably not that hard, honestly, but like you'd probably have to like 
make it like some kind of AI, like some machine learning for it to actually be able to know what like a tile is better than another tile, you know, like if if the player is about to win, like go in a spot so that he can't win, you know, that kind of a thing. And uh, other than that, try and like do different um, methods and all that stuff. I don't know. I, I really don't. I feel like an enumerator of um, players will help me here. So we can go ahead and have that. And then we can have like player one, player two. So we can go ahead and be all like, okay, like uh, at the beginning, int player int current player equals players dot player one either that or I don't need the players maybe I don't need the players I can just say player one that's interesting that's actually really nice that probably means that I don't actually need like this like name here but maybe it's just a good way to organize it I don't know Unless I can say like players that, like it's a pointer. No, that also doesn't work. Hmm. Because the thing is we need to be able to have it so that um, we have like um, player one is um, like an X and player two is an O. One way we could do that is just create objects of them, which would work. Maybe it would maybe work. I might do that. I think that actually is just an easy way of doing it because I can just go ahead and like um, instantiate them with like their given constructors and call that good. Yeah. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and like get rid of this stuff. We're going to save. We're going to be able to create a new class called tic-tac-toe player. Now we have the different like uh, files. We got a header file and a CPP file here. Um, tic-tac-toe player. We can just go ahead and format this like a little bit better because I don't like how it automatically does everything using name space standard include its header file this is going to be int int car maybe I think that's the only thing I need like car um, symbol you know And then we can just say like, um, get car. So 
So then we have private. How about symbol? Get symbol. That's a better way of putting it. Cool, okay, that's good. And then we can go ahead and get rid of that. And um, this symbol equals symbol. Go ahead and have car. We can go ahead and actually fix this so it is const. And that way it returns this symbol. There we go. Now we have this all working. TTT player, TTT dot symbol include H using namespace. This really isn't very exciting of a uh, data type, isn't it? Like, I feel like this isn't really doing much, you know? The only thing it's doing is just like allowing me to like use a class to be able to say, okay, this player is going to be X, this player is going to be O, and you know I don't have to track like multiple variables at the same time to make sure that I'm using the correct player. So I can go ahead and say um, I will need to create a class called TTT board probably too to actually track like the board, but. That's for that's probably for later. Um, okay, so I need to include ttt player dot h. Okay, equals new ttt player and it's going to be the x that I have an asterisk. And then we have O, then add the asterisk. I type it like that because if I type it the other way, it'll end up putting the asterisk right next to the data type and I prefer having the asterisk next to the actual variable name itself. So you have two players. Define two players for the game. Oh, that's something I didn't think of before. So let's go to, um, where was the other game? Rock, paper, scissors. So let's go to rock, paper, scissors. Once it's done here, it needs to like delete like uh, these ob. Well, it kind of deletes them at the end anyway, doesn't it? I should probably delete like instead of outside the for loop, I'll just delete it, like in inside of the do loop. Is I meant to say do loop. But um, but I can delete player and delete computer. It seems to work pretty fine. And let's also fix this because I think it did it automatically. I forgot to change it. And uh, there we go. Let's just make sure it's still working. So like, just make sure that when I run the rock, paper, scissors, it's going to uh, work. So it already ran through it, and uh, that theoretically means that it deleted the automatically allocated uh, 
like memory locations for those two variables. So theoretically that's fine. I think that'll be fine. And then just after we're done here, we'll say delete player one and delete, delete player two. And that way I'll be able to uh, keep the memory all nice and distributed finely. Because like with the other, with this one, we put it inside the do loop because we kind of have to like be able to allocate it at that moment so that like the uh, player's choice and the other choice like are together, you know. We create it with a constructor is what I'm trying to say. But these ones are basically just going to be constant, honestly. Is that actually like, I think we can say that. <laughs> We'll have these just be constant. Because they are. They are constant. That's their that's their purpose. Anyway. Uh, we've already almost gone on for two hours. I feel like I want to finish the tic-tac-toe game, but I'm not sure if I'll have time to. Like, I really was hoping that we would be able to get to, like, doing the other games. Like, I really wanted to do Hangman and stuff. But I just feel like it's going to be very difficult, too. I think we'll go until 5.30, and we'll see how far we are at that point, and whether or not it's worth it to continue. So that's what I'm going to try and do. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So, do... So count. So first of all, end line, and then like say a board or something. TTZ is one. Yeah. Okay. This really should have been Boole. <laughs> I feel like this needs to also pass in an object of type, um, whatever, whatever it was, whatever it's going to be, I guess. Cause like we need a board object that we'll be able to uh, go ahead and like uh, print the board for the player. And the dog is barking again. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out like what I want to do. I think we're going to create the uh, class file first to try and like actually like get that done and make sure that everything's like fine. So TTT board, that will just like increase my sanity levels like tenfold to be able to actually have that like uh, here and not have to worry about it at all. So first of all, we'll have like a uh, make move uh, function. So void make move, and we'll have like an int for like uh, the column in the row. We'll have a. Uh, I feel like uh, that the the is one really should shouldn't be a part of the. Like this, it should be an actual method inside of here. So bool is one. Because that just makes more sense to me, you know?
do we actually ever use the namespace standard inside of like uh, this thing here? Now that I think about it, well, I guess we use count, like the console out. So that kind of thing uh, is easier to do while having the namespace enabled. So we can just go ahead and have that. And then we have, just copy that. Or I don't know what I'm doing. So void TTT board make move. Int row, int column. Should I have constructors? Or well, I uh, should I have like non like default constructors for this one because I think that I don't actually need to worry about it. So we, all we have is like a um, a board. So we'll have like a car array. Like a two dimensional array. Um, board. Is this the right syntax? Oh, right, I'm, I'm thinking of Java. I'm thinking of Java syntax. This is the correct syntax in C++. <laughs> so I have a board of characters that are like that. And I'll need to worry about like um, whether or not like they're of a certain character or whatever. I just need to like have them be there, you know. The is one function is just going to be able to do it like that. So um Google is one and then string I need to like include string for that. So string standard string uh, void or no pff, I'm, I'm returning a string I don't need void um, actually maybe I don't need to do that I can just like say void um, print board I'll just have like a method that actually like prints the board for that board and um, print board. There we go. Then we can have bool ttt board is one. So that will check if it if the game is one. This will make a move in a certain position inside of the board. So let's just say, I think this one's easy. So um, okay. So first of all, let's just create a constructor. So what's going to happen is like um, Uh, we're just going to instantiate all the values inside of the board to a um, value of like just a space bar. Should it be less than two or should it be less than three? Because I feel like it also needs to fill in value of two. Because it needs to do a length, doesn't it? So. So static. Um, const. 
int board size equals three. So I can just go ahead and like use board size here and here to be able to like just make it like a little bit easier for me to like see what it's trying to do inside of the loop. So So it instantiates it to like having the space in the middle throughout so that when we like uh, print it out, it's going to have like those spaces in between to symbolize where the actual uh, X's and O's are going to go. Board row column equals space. And that's that. That's actually just going to instantiate it all together. Uh, the structure is not going to matter. Uh, make move. Uh, we basically just have it so that uh, I'm only just thinking it needs like an extra car um, symbol so that I can actually like know like uh, what to put there. So there we go. The This board uh, in that like certain position on the board is going to be that symbol. Now I have like a whole entire algorithm that's going to check whether or not it's one and then a thing to print the board. Uh, I, I've done like the print the board method before. I feel like I might just copy it because it's already done. And I, I feel like it just take too much effort to like uh, try and like not do that. So I'm going to like open like the other file again that was like in the uh, programming like uh, console games. Because it was like the C++ file that had it that was like, um, where was it? It was somewhere down here where it was um, print board, here it is. So we can go ahead and just copy all this into here. Uh, include IO stream so that I can actually go ahead and output stuff because what this is basically doing is allowing it so that like uh, prints like column uh, numbers so it's like it goes like one two three at like the uh, top of the uh, board that prints like another line that has like uh, the just like equal signs to separate that to uh, this. It's going to output um, the row plus one. So it's going to say like one as like uh, that row number. Then like uh, for across this whole entire thing, it's going to output like the board, that row and column. As well as this. And then it's going to output this at the end of it just to mark that that's the end of the line. And if it's not the final row, it's going to do another thing right here to separate it in the middle. And then it's just going to end it off at like the very last one. Fills middle of board with values. ending line I feel like this is not necessary if I just have this here uh, 
So it'll just like end this line at right hand side. And this will like uh, print another thing, end line and loop if it's not the last one, you know. Uh, this is going to actually be board size to make it easier again to see. Because printing for every row, it's not caring about the columns since it's going across each time. Um, I believe the rest of this makes sense. So I'm going to try and leave it for now. I think that that was the only thing I wanted to change. Uh, ending, ending, uh, ending separator. Sep I'm, I'm almost certain I spelled that wrong. Separator. Starting separator. And there we go. Starts from one instead of zero. Because internally the uh, row is going to be zero, like uh, programming does start at zero whenever you uh, start counting, but it's going to end up being that, um, like to the user, it's going to show the value one instead of like uh, that, and it's going to be able to count it in a more English way instead of a programming way, you know. Uh, the is one function, I feel like I'm also going to copy. Like, because that's like game over. Like, because as much as I was going to try and restart it from the beginning, I feel like these methods actually, like, worked pretty well. I'm just, like, going to try and look at them to make sure that they're actually, like, optimized for this. So it checks the rows for the wins, like, you know, and like just goes across each time. So it has like a car character test. If like the uh, test equals like a, a space bar, it continues on. So it just like says, okay, this row can't be a winner because uh, there's a, there's a space here already. And then it eventually like checks the columns just to make sure that uh, all of them actually do end up working then. And all that kind of stuff, you can kind of look through it if you want to, because it kind of does about the same thing for columns, but goes down the row instead and returns a win if it like is declared. Returns a win if it's declared. I feel like I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this right here because this right here really should. I think I know exactly why it's done like this because like that test is done so that like the uh, player who made that last move um, ends up like uh, it, it makes sure that it displays that they won. But I feel like there's a better way of doing it in that um, well there's not really much of a better way of doing it because I can like say a bool of like oh is one but I can't really say who won it? Exactly, you know. I also probably shouldn't say is one. I should go ahead and like say what like this one says and like say game over. 
because there can be a tie. So maybe this is the best way of doing it. I might just like keep it like this. But the good news is that like uh, through this, I'm also doing it in like even though I like basically copied the code, it's done in a way so that it's like all internalized inside of the board class instead of me having to worry about like everything else. So right here, uh, you can see like okay um. Like we'll have like the option to be able to move and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully that shouldn't take too long for me to do here. Given that I have like this done already. And we're going to have ourselves a board too. So let's have TTT board. Um, I need to actually include the board. <laughs> TT board board equals new TTT board. Bam. Ah, oh, man, it, it did it automatically for me again. So we can go ahead and move that actually to the beginning. And at the end, we'll say, really? By pasting, I did that. Okay, so delete board once it's done with it so that even if it loops, again, it'll still be able to allocate the memory, but it'll like be able to do it kind of like that. And it'll, it'll be managed a lot better that way. Trust me. <laughs> Although maybe you shouldn't. If you know a little bit more about C++ than I do, maybe you should try and make sure that uh, I'm doing everything correctly. I am a little bit new to a lot of these concepts. So... Anyway, we got this here. So let's just have like a value of like something so that it's like it just does it. Um, I'm just not going to like do the checkers. I might, I might implement that later, but let's just not actually check that the player is doing the correct input right now. even though that's actually kind of a bad thing. Um, it's like, uh, please enter your row. Ooh, wait a minute, this board should not, this should not be done like this. Actually, it should be done like this, but um, it should be like done in like a different do while loop so that like we have it like a while a uh, board dot uh or game over or while board not game over so that we don't like try and like delete the board every single time so count enter which row Enter, uh, I, all right, we have like the uh, chill program, remember? So, uh, enter what, enter the row you want, man. And then, so first of all, int row equals row int call and there we go we have it so that it's uh, sin will go into row copy column 
and that way the user is able to select that. We have it so that um, board make move is um, row column. Uh, let's just like insert like a character for now, uh, just so that we don't get an error, because we technically need like a current player variable too. So. So current player equals, let's just have it be like player two. Let's not make these constant because I feel like that's ruining this right now. Okay, so there we go. We have a current player pointer at the moment. We'll delete current player as well. Just to make sure that we don't forget to do that later on. And uh, so the first thing it will do, well, first of all, I'll have like the row and column like selected, you know, but. Um, We'll try and make sure that like the current player is um, available. I feel like I kind of want to edit the TTT player a little bit though. Because I just came up with an idea for like um, having like a name, I think that'll make things easier. There we go, now I can go ahead and have that. Um, right, we need to reopen this because a uh, name actually needs to be here. So name, herb string, std string. There we go. Should it be the opposite way? I feel like it should be the opposite way. There we go. Heck, we'll even go ahead and uh, reverse the order of these just because it's better that way. <laughs> why not, honestly? So there we go. Name first, then symbol. And uh, that's also how it is here. It'll return the name. In tic-tac-toe, we're going to have it be uh, player one. And we're going to have it be player two. Eventually, we can probably like add the actual capability for it to be like uh, players will enter their name. But we'll just have it be like this for now. Anyway. I think like uh, dog is whining because people are coming home. Uh, I did say 5.30. It's a little bit before 5.30, but honestly, we've probably done all we really want to do. <sighs> the thing is, we're not really that close to done, but I don't know. We're just going to be done because it's probably best to be done right now. So it's been good. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the stream and uh, learned a little bit about C++, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but either way... Uh, 
the replay of this will be on Behind the Frontline if you want to be able to check out this. But uh, yeah, until next time, this has been Frontline, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.